the sons of God mixing with the daughters of the earth. The Book of Enoch offers a disturbing vision of the fall of the angels who lust after earthly women. And they began to go into them and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms and enchantments, and they became pregnant. These angels have crossed over this boundary that they shouldn't have when they decided to descend upon earth. This unleashed upon the earth all sorts of problems, not only these giants who are bloodthirsty and violent, but also these angels went on to teach humankind a variety of forbidden crafts. They also taught human beings how to make weapons of war. Now the good angels, the ones not tempted by these beautiful women, go to God and say, you know, there's a lot of bloodshed caused by these bad angels. The Maya and Incas of South America believed a race of giants existed on Earth before the Great Flood. So did many other ancient civilizations. Some took them for gods, others left likenesses of them in stone or wrote about them in their histories. As long as 6,000 years ago, another remarkable civilization evolved. Its people were the Sumerians, who had an extraordinarily advanced culture. Their list of first uh, just almost sounds like a, uh, a whole list of, of our whole society. They had the first bicameral congress, they had the first writing, they had the first school systems, and you know, you just go on and on and on. Um, so you have to ask, uh, well, well, where did all this come from? And I think that you need to turn to the ancient Sumerians themselves and listen very carefully to what they have to say, because what they have to say, not just in one place, but over and over and over again, is that they were taught civilization by these uh, beings that came from the heavens to the earth. The Sumerians wrote down their history on clay tablets like these, which lay ignored in a Berlin museum for half a century. Few people have been able to decipher this ancient language, but one of them is Zechariah Sitchin. The writings and the pictorial uh, evidence left behind by the Sumerians going back 6,000 years speak and depict uh, people who came from another planet uh, called Nibiru and uh, many of the depictions show them uh, much bigger at least uh, by a third perhaps more than the average uh, human being so uh, they were giants. This Sumerian cylinder seal from a Berlin museum is astonishing for several reasons. First, it depicts our solar system with the sun at the center and the planets arrayed around it, a fact not known to European science till around 300 years ago. And amazingly, there's another planet, which the Sumerians called Nibiru and believed that it was from where the Anunnaki or celestial giants came from. He is about 10 feet tall, a giant one of those who from heaven to earth came. Looking for signs of extraterrestrial life, astronomers have searched deeper and deeper into the universe. But all along, maybe they should have been looking closer to home. For it's in our own solar system that a mysterious object has recently been detected, near where the Sumerians placed their planet Nibiru, home of the Anunnaki. For the believers, this is convincing evidence that the celestial giants are real. The ancient Sumerian text, uh, just in a very broad overview, basically tell us that more than 400,000 years ago that these Anunnaki came from space and landed on the earth in the Tigris-Euphrates Valley they uh, began to set up a colony that they called Eden. According to Genesis, Eden, or Eden, is where Adam was created from dust and Eve from one of his ribs. Others, however, have a more high-tech version of how human life began. In time, needing manpower, needing workers, uh, jumped the gun on evolution uh, using genetic engineering. 
and they produced a, a hybrid. Legend has it that when the Anunnaki came back after several thousand years to see how their genetic handiwork had turned out, they found the Earth females irresistibly attractive. Us. Basically, the Anunnaki said in their writings that the Sumerians left behind, we shall make the Adamu. They called their slave servant Adamu plural, which comes down to us in the Bible as the Adam. We shall make the Adamu in our own image after our own likeness, word for word in the Bible, and they did that. So no, we, we look like that, that we, the, the modern race of people, were genetically engineered right. by this superhuman race of aliens that came from another planet. And that we look like them in the in the uh, cylinder seals that we have, the 5,000 or so cylinder seals that we have out of the Sumerian culture depicting gods and humans on the same cylinder seal at the same time, they always look the same. How did we lose two chromosomes? All primates have 48 chromosomes, we have 46. That is an awful lot of DNA. Where did it, if you read the Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki flourished from around 400,000 years ago, and by the way, they called their, where they lived in uh, the Tigris Euphrates Valley, the Eden. That was their word for where they live. So we've heard Adam, and we've heard Eden. Eden. Well, it turns out Adam. that a lot, of the, a lot of the Old Testament is an attempt to rewrite the Sumerian epics of creation because they were considered to be the guys with the word. I have to break here. Accounts of godlike visitors abound. For example, in the books of the Tibetan Kanchur. The Kanchur consists of over a thousand volumes containing the holy texts of Lamaism. Their secret code is the most complex ever devised. To date, only one one-hundredth of the Kanchur has been deciphered. The resulting translations are full of references to gods appearing in the sky, of the luminous pearls and transparent spheres in which they lived. In the fragmentary histories from the Bible to the scripts of Babylon, there are tantalizing views of Earth seen from a distance, seen from space, seen by whom? Was it the vision of ancient astronauts communicated to the primitive population of a still young planet Earth? The search for humanity's first possible contact with alien beings in prehistoric times leads to an unlikely place, to the Bible's earliest chapters, to the book of Genesis. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Genesis 6, 4. Exactly who were the sons of God mentioned in the text? The original Hebrew word is Nephilim. One translation of the word Nephilim is the men who came down or those who came down, uh, meaning those who came down from the sky. They could just be uh, something like great heroes that uh, came down from the sky and produced a hybrid race. We're dealing with uh, an issue that I think has potential for being highly controversial because after all, if you say that Jehovah is an ET, then that changes the basis of Judaism and Christianity in a very fundamental way. For many ancient Christians, the Book of Enoch was essential, yet it was banned from the Christian Bible. We don't know why this literature was ultimately excluded from the canon. Um, perhaps it's because of its description of the fall of the rebel angels and their mating with mortals.